just as an introductory here, introduction to the vision, we have Ezekiel now who is brought in spirit to Jerusalem. And obviously we're talking about the temple area. So this we must keep in mind again, like I've said earlier, that the temple, which we are, we want to keep its application in its proper translation, to translate it into we understand that we are not the temple. So now I want to go down just a little bit. Let's go to, let's, let's, say, uh, let's see what Jehovah told Ezekiel to do. And he said to me, Son of man, please dig into the wall. And when I dug, he entered the wall and he saw the door. And he said unto me, Go in and see the evil abominations which they are doing there. Uh, verse 9 of Ezekiel 8. And then uh, verse 10, And I went in and looked, and I saw all kinds of creeping creatures, abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel, carved all around on the walls. So here, Richard mentioned about their using owls as sacrifices. And here we see that all of the creeping beasts drawn on the walls within the temple. So let your mind or your imagination go at work for the spiritual temple. And then at that time, and facing them stood, verse 11, 70 men of the elders of the house of Israel, and in their midst stood Yahazah, Yahu, son of Shaphan. Uh, each one had a censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Like these people were administers. They were the 70 elders, and in the temple, they had an incense a censer in their hands. So incense was going on. What was going on? Well, what were the sacrifices done? What were the worship done? And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the dark? And each one in the room of his idol, for they say, Jehovah does not see us. Jehovah has forsaken the land. Now this is unlike the fool that says in his heart that there is no Elohim or there is no El or there is no God. These people know full well that there is a Jehovah, that there is an El. But they say in their darkened heart that he has forsaken them, that he has forsaken the land, that he's not around, that he does not see. Therefore giving them licentiousness to do whatever they want to do. And he said to me, you are to see still greater abomination which they are doing. And he brought me to the door of the north gate of the house of Jehovah, and I saw women sitting there weeping for Tammuz. So there we had a, an idol, a crafted idol, and women were weeping and worshiping. Then he said to me, have you seen this, O son of man? You are to see still greater abomination than these. Now if I'm not mistaken, every time that the messenger tells Ezekiel, have you seen this, O son of man? If we were to go in the original connotation of this, it's basically saying, have you paid attention? Do we pay attention? But captives to every word of Jehovah, all imagination, we need to bring it down, cast it down. All imagination that exalted itself above anything that is so called to be worshipped in Jehovah, and anything that is called holy, and if, it's not down, uh, if it is not in line with that holy word, and that which needs to be worshipped, which is Jehovah, we need to cast it down and bring our thought captive to that word. And that's how we're going to be more and more and more established as we obey. But have we paid attention to the things that are being done in the holy temple that are considered to be abominations, starting with us? Okay, let's keep reading down. And he brought me into the inner court of the house of Jehovah, and there at the door of the uh, Hekel of Jehovah, between the porch and the altar, were about 25 men with their backs towards the holy place of Jehovah and their faces toward the east. And we know what this represents. And they were bowing themselves eastward to the sun. An abomination. And he said to me, Have you seen, O son of man? 
Have you paid attention? Is it a small matter to the house of Judah to do the abominations which they have done here? For they have filled the land with violence and turned back to provoke me and see they are putting the branch to my nose. Okay. In verse 12, we read that what Israel are doing in the dark, it does not mean that it is dark that no one sees. It's just like the moon now, which is concealed. It's in the dark, and we don't see it. But yet, we know of one who does. And he that we should fear in regard to our actions, and our deeds, and our words. And it's done basically in the concealing of things. That's why I call it the secrecy of things. It's, it's done in dark. Things that are done without no one seeing. So they think, or so we would think, because at one aspect, one time or another, we were all in darkness and the light shine on us. And we don't do those things that we were doing in the dark or in secret. And because everything proceeds out of the heart. He goes on towards the end of this chapter. Let's read from 17 in the last verse. And he said to me, Have you seen, O son of man, is it a small matter that the house of Judah to do the abomination which they have done here? For they have filled the land with violence and turned back to provoke me. And see, they are putting the wrench to my nose. Therefore I shall indeed deal with deal in wrath. My eyes shall not pardon, nor would I spare. And they shall cry in my ear with a loud voice, but I shall not hear them. And this goes in line with that the prayers of the those people who live in abomination, those who are idolaters, even their prayers are considered to be an abomination because the heart is wicked. The heart is an abominable status or is in an abominable status in idolatry. And so the prayers are not answered because they are an abomination because it's not done in spirit and in truth. It's all within. Okay. Let's go with that recompense of the last verse of Ezekiel 8 and 18. And there's a complementary verse in Ezekiel 11, 21. So Ezekiel 11 and then uh, verse 21. But to those whose heart walk after the heart of their disgusting matters and their abominations, I shall recompense their deed on their own heads, declared the Master Jehovah. So we see that even though if it's done in the dark, in the concealing of things, that uh, all those who are in a, ma a disgusting counsel or their thought, the imagination of their being, and walks in their abominations, they will be re recompenses according to their deeds. They will fall back on their heads. So... We, as the spiritual temple, we need to make sure that we understand this concept and that every single day, in Him we have our movement, our being, in our breath, and we live to His glory. And for His name's sake, because of His glorious name, that we, the sons of Jacob, are not consumed. His very being, his very nature of being grateful and loving kindness and forbearing with us, especially his spiritual house, that we are alive and that we are still breathing and giving us what we have now so that we can live for his glory and have an effect in our surroundings. So as the spiritual temple and each one of us building our home, make sure that we build it with those precious material to resist the fire so that it's not consumed even though we're going to go through testing times is to see whether inside of us is there anything that is uh, unrighteous and whether we're still going to serve Jehovah uh, through Yahushua regardless of what and we know that our reward is not so much here on earth but that our reward is in heaven and which we